new, 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 new. All right. right. Okay. In stock now, we had it in um, the shop, but now it's actually available to purchase. We have the Raspberry Pi Compute I.O. board for the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, compute modules. Um, we have some compute modules, not the Wi-Fi ones in stock. I think we have like the two gigabyte MMC, no Wi-Fi uh, basic ones. Um, this I.O. board has everything. Real-time clocks, breakouts, multiple uh, USB ports, ethernet, two HDMI, it's got like like three camera connectors or something. It's got multiple display connectors. It's got a PCIe slot. I mean, like it's got everything, DC power jack. So if you're designing something with the uh, compute module, uh, the compute module four from Raspberry Pi, um, and you don't know what you need, use this design, figure out the minimal hardware that you need for your you know, final product, and then pair everything else away. Um, and you know, you can basically use this as your development board for the compute module which plugs right in. Let me grab my compute module. And I can even show it off on the overhead. Okay, so this is the compute module plugged in. Uh, so it's got these nice little sockets. So you can plug it in right here. Um, PCIe, uh, power supply, fan controller, uh, DC, I think this is probably up to 12 volts input, micro SD card to USB, Ethernet, Two HDMI, real-time clock, uh, standard Raspberry Pi hat 2x20, uh, two camera ports, two display ports, and then I think this is, yeah, the configuration jumper. So, yeah, especially the PCIe, that's kind of cool. I didn't even know that that, that was available. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Plug in whatever card you want under PCIe there. Okay. All right, so check it out. And uh, it doesn't come with a compute module, but we stock the compute modules. We plug them together. Um, next up, we have from We Actually, these are called like black pills because um, they're kind of like an upgrade of the blue pills. This is an STM 32F411 chip. I think it has 512K of flash and then uh, 128K of RAM. Um, there's also a spot on the bottom for a QSPY flash, should you want to solder one in. Um, this has support in Arduino, who STM32 Arduino. Uh, there's some MicroPython. Um, port I found for it. it's linked in the product and we also have circuit python support for it it's got a couple buttons on it uh bootloader button reset button user button led it's kind of minimal um but it does have a lot of gpio and it's a nice powerful chip so if you want to get going with stm32 especially in circuit python or MicroPython, where you really want like a cortex m4 you want like a good amount of memory um this uh board will um give you a lot of gpio the power stuff, USB-C, and you can kind of get going. So we don't make this, it's by WEACT, um, but if you look online for Black Pill, uh, STM32 F411, you can see lots of tutorials and projects people build with this board. Okay, next up. Next up, it's this mini PIR sensor, which I can also show on the overhead. So we have um, large PIR sensors uh, that have wires on them. This is a little cute PIR sensor. Uh, what's so good about it? Well, it plugs into a breadboard, it's kind of tiny, and it's really simple. You just give it three to 12 volts on the power pin, ground pin, and then the output just toggles high for two seconds whenever uh, somebody walks by. It has about three to five meter distance, um, you know, but it can work much closer as well. Uh, you know, you wave your hand in front of it or a person walks by and it detects motion. So these are often used for, you know, um, um, automatic light turning on systems in bathrooms or, you know, um, motion detectors or intruder detectors. Um, a lot of people want projects where when a human walks by or maybe a large animal, it's detected. Um, so this PIR sensor will do the job. So let me zoom in. Um, okay, so you see there's a regulator here. Um, this these are these three pins. You can see um, there's very small text. It's a negative sign for ground, O for output, uh, VCC positive. And then there's this little uh, lens over the actual PIR element and a regulator on the back. So yeah, you just give it uh, three or 12 volts and it's just, you plug into a breadboard. It's very easy to use. Um, you will have to have the pin read by a microcontroller. I tried to connect it up to like, like some PIRs, they can drive like a relay or like an LED, but this output pin isn't very strong. So you'd want to read it from a microcontroller and then have that microcontroller or a transistor and then have that actually power, a uh, more high powered output. 
Okie dokie. Next up, we got a bunch of wires. Yes, we've got pigtails. These are JST XH pigtails. Let's talk about them all at once. We've got two pair pigtails. We've got three pair. We got three wires. And guess what comes after three? We've got four pair. And we've got five pair. And last but not least, six pair. So uh, you know, you want um, some nice chunky wires. These are really easy to plug and unplug. You get two halves, right? You get the socket and the plug um, with various pins. We also have these in like um, JST uh, SH, sorry, JST PH, and we also have these in uh, Pico Blade, which are very small. These are a little chunkier. Uh, they use 26 gauge wire. The connector itself can carry about three amps. Um, it, it's a nice chunky connector, so good when you need a little bit more uh, power or you want something that's a little, you know, less fiddly than the, the Pico blades. I'll show it on the overhead real fast. You can see one example, um, but they're all pretty much the same thing. Um, this one uh, is the three pin and there's a nice key here. So, uh, you know, you can't plug it in backwards. Ooh, that's nice. Can only go in one way and it has a nice little locking action. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's solid against pulling, but then when you really want to, it's uh, it's friction lock. Um, uh, so uh, each one, sorry, each connector half is 2.5 millimeter pitch. It's not quite one inch, 0.1 inch. It's like a little bit less, right? It's 2.5 millimeter, not 2.54. That said, you can pretty much fit this into something that has uh, 0.1 inch pitch, you know, especially the two, three, and four pin. Once you get to five and six, it's a little bit fiddlier, but because um, you know the the tolerance does add up. But it's close to ish, uh, 0.1 inch, and so you can, if you really want to, you know, plug uh, this side into header, uh, you can kind of get away with this, like this PIR sensor. It's like, well, you know, it works just fine, even though technically um, it's a little bit different. So, uh, JST XH pigtails in multiple sizes. Um, I love having these pigtails because I see people try to crimp their own connectors. And if you're really good at crimping, uh, you can of course make any connector you could ever want. But if you're like me, uh, you sometimes don't want to crimp, you just want the cable and you solder the ends to whatever you want and you're good to go. Okay, and to start tonight besides you, Lady Ada, the community, our customers, our team, is what we were talking about before is the Feather RP2040. Woohoo, if you're watching this live, you might even have some in stock. That's right, the Feather RP2040. We got those chips in uh, last week late, and then on Monday, uh, we got the PCBs, and we ran them. We did a small run, and we'll be doing more. Okay, so let's stop here so I can point out all the things we got going on. So it is a Feather. It's Feather-shaped, uh, 2 inches by 0.9 inches, USB-C connector. Uh, a lot of our newer Feathers have USB-C. It's got the standard JST battery connector. It's got battery charging built in. Uh, there's two buttons. On the left, there's a reset button. On the very right, there's a boot select button. Uh, for those who've played with the RP2040, you know that you have to press the boot select button while resetting or powering up to go into the UFT bootloader. Uh, so that's a great way to easily load code onto it. Um, you don't need any special DFU utils or a special SWD programmer. But speaking of SWD programmer, there is an SWD header in the middle. It's not populated. Why? Because we wanted to keep this feather nice and slim. A lot of people like to kind of like make slim feather packages and the, the SW header would make it uh, kind of extra tall. So we left it out. That said, uh, we sell the connectors to like a dollar. You can buy them DigiKey, a couple cents. Um, solder on an SWD connector should you wish to um, connect this up to a debugger like your J-Link or whatnot and uh, use the debugger tools. Not a lot of people use the debugger. So again, it's, it's an optional thing. Uh, there's an onboard NeoPixel uh, that you can control. It's connected to uh, one of the pins that isn't brought out. Uh, in CircuitPython, we use it to notify you about your uh, program status, but use it for whatever you like. Uh, there's a crystal and, of course, the RP2040 chip, right? This this cool dual Cortex M0 runs about 125 megahertz. Um, it's got 264K of RAM in it, which is wonderful. Um, and because it has RAM but not flash, if you look on the very right-hand side, kind of between the chip and the boot select, button, there is a QSPY flash chip. That's the execute in place flash. It's eight megabytes. Um, it's really chunky because it's going to be shared with your CircuitPython or MicroPython code, as well as the firmware running on the RP2040 itself. 
So for CircuitPython, at least we take about a megabyte and then you have seven megabytes left for all the files and fonts and libraries and images and animations, audio, whatever you have, you stick it on that disk drive. So you have seven megabytes left over, which is a good amount. Um, if you're wondering why eight, you can watch last week's Desk of Lady Ada and uh, I'll tell you the secret, which is it was a thing that worked. Um, and then last but not least, there's a STEM QT connector. So you can quickly connect all sorts of sensors and devices, OLEDs and such. Into the end, uh, we even have a Grove adapter cable. So if you have Grove I2C sensors, plug those in as well. Um, the idea is to make it super easy for people to get started with CircuitPython on the RP2040. And speaking of, I, you know, I have some Feather projects I thought I would, I would show off. Yeah. Maybe on the overhead. So starting with, let's see which, which demos work. It's always the, the joy. Okay, so this one. And you decided, hey, I've got this feather on a new chip. Why don't I? Let's connect it to a feather wing. Why don't I see how it works? Yeah. Make sure everything still works. Pretty much. That's how, that's how the sausage is made. So here I've got the RP2040. And here is the, the, the Feather M4 RGB feather wing, right? So this is for RGB matrix displays. Um, as seen on the matrix portal, people love these, you know, they're, they're used in pixel purses. They come in all sorts of sizes and it's a really easy way to add tons of LEDs to a project. And I just have it, um, on a doubler. So these are just connected side by side. So you can see both of them. Um, and then when I power this with five volts, this will power up and then the matrix, I'm going to, you know, this is connected to this matrix, which I'm going to move out of the way. I'm having a day. Oh goodness, how do I get back? I'm like running Android on this thing. Nope, that didn't work. Shoot. You know the magic? Well. I do not know what I pressed. Thank you. Um, okay. Sorry. So, um, this Hi, live demo. Uh, so the RGB feather wing is connected up to this matrix and to running this little animation, um, which is uh, taking um, icons from a bitmap and then like swirling them around in CircuitPython. It's just an easy demo to show uh, quick animations of, uh, of iconog iconography and, and bitmaps on um, an RGB feather wing. Uh, so that just shows like, you know, you can plug and play existing feather wings onto your RP2040 feather. Um, the next demo I have, I got two demos going, is I took this um, RP2040 feather. This time I'll be very careful not to press any buttons. Um, so this is the RP2040 feather here, and I plugged it into an airlift feather wing. So this adds an ESP32 as a, a Wi-Fi coprocessor. And then I plugged this into a TFT feather wing. So again, it's all feather wings all the way down. Uh, powered this off of a battery and then plugged in a temperature and humidity sensor. And then over here, um, I've got, uh, it's connecting over Wi-Fi and sending the data to Adafruit IL. So like this was a, um, hold on, let me get real close. Um, so connecting to Adafruit IO and then sending the data over Wi-Fi uh, through the request library through HTTPS um, securely to Adafruit IO for data logging. So again, it's all kind of plug and play. You plug in the Wi-Fi feather wing on the top. It uses the standard ESP32 SPI library we wrote for CircuitPython. Plug into a TFT feather wing. So now you've got your console um, with a cute little blinka in the corner. Um, displaying so you can you know easily see what your circuit Python board is doing and then finally uh, plug and play sensors and then run one of our 300 plus libraries to get that temperature and humidity data and um, send it online and then you can see over here I've got so this you can phone. do IOT projects with the RP2040 right now that's right it's gonna use circuit Python mm. so circuit Python works so you can see the temperature and humidity and if I breathe on this You should see the humidity pop up and the temperature pop up. Assuming I didn't break it. There you go. So humidity from my breath, uh, two or three seconds later, gets uploaded to Adafruit.io, and so you can get like instant 
IoT projects uh, with the RP2040 Feather using the existing Feather ecosystem, which is awesome. Um, you know, I put these demos together um, in only a few seconds, a few seconds, a few minutes um, before the show. Um, you know, just by plugging in the existing parts we have and running the example code that we already have. Um, All right. Well, for we only feathers. have 40 left in stock, so um, they'll probably be gone shortly. I know. Okay. So here's my demos. Parts.